he, but this book is believed to not be canon, to not be by Dumas, to be just by a, a completely random guy. Uh, and I looked up to see what else this guy wrote. And he wrote a whole bunch of stuff. None of it I'd ever heard of, including one book. It was like The Countess of Monte Cristo or something like that. He wrote like a, like a female version of, of The Count of Monte Cristo. So I thought that was very funny. But yeah, I, I, I bet you're going to look out for more of his books. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So who, what's, it, what's the guy called? Oh, goodness. I, he's, a, he's kind of a no-name. I didn't even bother to write down his name. It doesn't even say it in the book. Like, when you read the book, it, it doesn't did even you say. The, did you enjoy the book, though? So oh, I loved the I loved the book. It's the best book I read mm-hmm. this month. Um, but let me, get, let me get the name of the chap for you. Um, believed to have been written by Paul Mahallon. Well, tell George Eliot to move aside because we've got a new kid in town. Yeah. Right? Everyone, everyone's favorite well-known author, Paul Mahallon. Um, <laughs> so, look, this book does not have um, the three musketeers, right? Or D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan's not in it. Um, I'm not going to tell people why. I don't want to spoil things from any of the other books. But D'Artagnan's not in it. Uh, Athos isn't in it. And Porthos isn't in it. The only one who's in it is Aramis. And Aramis is a very old man. Uh, and Aramis has kind of changed in character a little bit. I mean, he was always the sneakiest of the musketeers, but now he's basically the bad guy. Okay. Yeah. So he's plotting. He wants it, you know, he's already like high, high priest of the Jesuits. He wants to become Pope. He's got a lot of political power. He's moved from France to Spain. He wants to do some maneuvering to get control of the French throne now. Um, and he's also going to use Porthos' son as part of that that whole thing. But of course, he doesn't know it's Porthos' son, okay? So the son of Porthos is this random guy called Joel. And Joel never knew who his dad was, but Joel's a big old guy because Porthos was the big, strong, giant musketeer. And he he finds this sword in the spot where Porthos died. Somehow, this, like, image of, of his dad gives him the sword, you know, and it's a massive sword, and on the sword it says... Um, all for one and one for all engraved on the sword hmm. which is of course the slogan of the musketeers which is actually only ever said once in the whole series of five books oh, really? Really? yeah yeah it's really? in the very first book it's the only time they ever say it um, <laughs> until, until now it's on the sword um, so that that's cool right and you know he meets the, but I love the romance man I love the romance he meets this lovely girl um, o- Aurora and, he, you know, he's valiant. So he sees some some guys heckling this girl and he jumps in and he's going to save the day and he's got to brandish his sword and he chases away the bad guys and they're, they're, they're stealing money from people and he, he, you know, he comes in and saves the day. He's very valiant. And this is one of these books where everyone's challenging people to duels left, right and center. And, you know, if you if you say something bad, you know, bad in the presence of a woman, then, you know, I'm going to lay down my gauntlet and we're going to have a duel and we're all going to die. And it, I, I love it. I love the romance of these yeah, books. Like that, yeah. <laughs> and it's very short as well. It's like 200 pages. I think it's very, very short, but maybe 300 at a push. But um, it's the best book I read this month. Like, I, I just I loved it. Aramis's scheming took me a little bit by surprise because I think that he's not quite there in The Three Musketeers. But then again, a lot of years are supposed to have passed. So maybe he's gotten worse, you know, he's taken his worst trait and he's gotten worse and worse, you know, as, as time has gone on. And I guess that's something that could happen. But I love the swashbuckling. I do like that we get to see um, Porthos' son. And I don't want to give nice. any, I don't want to really give spoilers for the ending, but throughout most of the book, Aramis and Joel don't know who and, each other is. And does he, because we did talk about uh, Alice Automated by Jeff Noon, where he basically pretends to write, he, he writes a, a sequel to the two original Alice books. And he did Im- imitate the star very well in the first half, up to the point that it, be- that it became less of an Alice story. Did this author also imitate Duma, did Dumas Senior style very well? Or yes, did you feel that? Yeah. Yes, excellent. Like you would think this oh, really? was Dumas. Okay. Like it's believably wow, by Dumas. Yeah, it's very, very well done. That's um, my only criticism is that it rushes a lot near the end. Like Dumas books okay. would typically be longer than this, and this book starts out quite slow in the usual way, slow but exciting. Dumas is a master of that. Um, mm-hmm. But then, just kind of near the end, it just like all rushes, and it's like you know, okay, everything's got to wrap up in the next fifty pages. Like I don't, I don't know why it kind of gets so quick, you know, but 
um, look, it's lovely. You don't get to see too many of the characters you know, but I mean, look, look at the kind of romantic scenes where Joel, this girl he's only met like two days ago, and he's saying, you know, that he would lay down his life for her and shed all the blood in his body to protect her. And she's in love with him. And there's this a nice scene um, where there's, there's going to be a wedding. So they, they put Joel in jail. And it becomes very reminiscent of the Count of Monte Cristo at that point. Mm-hmm. And um, he doesn't know that he's getting let out. So they take him to a wedding um, because they want to use him as a pawn in their political game. But he thinks he's been taken to his execution. So there's, a, there's nice comic scenes where he's saying, like, I know the last meal is supposed to be kind of fancy, but like, I'm in a palace. Like, where have they taken me? And and they're, they're always talking across purposes where he's like, oh, the big day's here and they mean the wedding and he means that, you know, that he's being killed. Oh, right, okay. I'm losing my freedom. <laughs> so, and so, like, yeah. <laughs> sounds very Woodhousian again. There's a, there's a bit of that, yeah. And they're, they're kind of speaking, because, you know, this old-fashioned sexist idea that when you get married, you kind of lose your freedom and you're, you know, so they're, they're saying that kind of stuff, but he thinks it's about him dying, you know, so it, that's quite yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. That's quite funny. <laughs> wow, I'd love to read it. Right, and what's the book called again? The Son of Porthos. Um, okay. My favorite bit from the whole book. Someone says, and what might your name be? And he says, I'm not sure what it might be, but it is Joel. I love that. I don't know why. I don't know why I love that so much. But it just, it is hilarious. Is um, that the phrase you're going to start using? <laughs> I think so, right? I think so. There's, there's a lovely little chap called Friquette, who's a kind of... I guess they describe him as like a kind of dwarf essentially like he's a very short person but he's high up and he's in the military and things like he's an important person but he's very very hot-headed because people are always making fun of his height and when they meet in the tavern and he wants some food and Porthos wants to share his food and they have a duel and they're gonna fight and the landlord's in on the duel and the barman's in on the duel and they're all gonna have a big fight and then they all become best friends and now they're friends for life and they're they love each other platonically and they help each other out in the army later on like i just love the, the bonds that these people form over a jewel or over meeting in one day you know that that romance it's it's amazing and this is written very very excellently exactly like the the duma uh the whole series of duma books so right. it's if, if you've read the five you know three musketeers series and you just thought it would be lovely if there was a little bit more, then this is essentially a very early example of fan fiction um, that is just perfect. I think it would be interesting also to now check out Alexander Dumas Jr.'s book, because, I mean, uh, I'm just wondering if there's anything... You know, yeah, I don't, I don't know, know a lot about, about, about Junior, to, to be perfectly honest. But he is an author, and he was an author, and I do see his books from time to time, especially in second-hand bookshops in the French section, so at least in, in the original French, it's relatively popular, so mm. I think. Okay, I've never, I've never tried it, to be honest. Well, but I, I, I love to, I mean, this is, this, is, this is risky business, but I would maybe put Dumas almost on, like if Dickens is 100%, Dumas is like 99. Like it's, it's really, I, I think that Dumas is a very, very special author. Well, um, so enough. The only reason I can't quite tie him with Dickens is because I've read all of Dickens and I've really only read a yeah. certain amount of Dumas, so it wouldn't be mm. fair. Like, he could have a couple of terrible books in there, for all I know. And that's the problem, mm. you know? Mm. Well, we'll see then when you've read them. I'm sure you will. Well, <laughs> well I will. I've got, I've got one on my shelf to go to, but... Well, let me tell you what I read. I I also read, after um, The Fifth Mountain, I read the first two plays of the Dublin Trilogy by Sean O'Casey. So Sean O'Casey being a big man for for Ireland becoming Ireland. So written, mm-hmm. so he's basically a self-taught, um, well, you know, kind of a politician kind of figure, but he just, just started writing plays. He wasn't really educated, but he started writing plays around the Easter Rising time of Ireland when Ireland started to want to become independent and want to not be a British satellite state, basically. Yeah. Um, or the British. 